Here I've plotted these two power laws, y equals x to the two-thirds and y equals x to the three-fourths. Note that this is a standard plot, not a log-log plot, so you can see that these are nonlinear relationships. What can be gleaned from this is that the metabolic rates of organisms have somehow evolved to be more efficient than we would expect in the sense that a higher metabolic rate represents a higher rate of distribution of nutrients to cells, so more efficient in that sense. Thus, if this scaling relationship with an exponent of 3 fourths is indeed correct, then evolution has somehow allowed organisms to overcome the limitation implied by the ratio of surface area to volume. Interestingly, scientists have observed other biological scaling laws that have a 4 in the denominator of the exponent. So heart rate scales like body mass to the minus 1 fourth. That is, the lower your body mass, the higher your heart rate. Blood circulation time scales with body mass to the 1 fourth. Lifespan scales with body mass to the 1 fourth, etc. What's going on with this 1 fourth or 3 fourths exponent? People have talked about these so-called quarter power scaling laws. In the 1990s, a group of scientists at the Santa Fe Institute formed a collaboration in order to try and understand these scaling laws and what caused them. Jeffrey West is a theoretical physicist, and he started working together with Jim Brown, who is an ecologist, and Brian Enquist, who was at that time a graduate student working with Jim Brown. This interdisciplinary group approached this subject in a new way, asking the question, what is the structure of the distribution networks inside organisms, and what effect does that have on metabolic rate? Their general idea is summed up like this. Metabolic scaling rates and other biological rates are limited not by surface area, but by rates at which energy and materials can be distributed between surfaces where they are exchanged and the tissues where they are used. So the idea here is now that surface area shouldn't be seen as a limitation. The limitation should be seen as the structure of the distribution system. So how are energy and materials distributed? Well, just to show some pictures, here's a picture of the circulatory system in humans, a picture of the lungs with these so-called bronchi, which have a similar tree-like structure to the circulatory system. Here's an electron micrograph that shows a highly magnified view of the vascular system, and you can really see this kind of fractal tree structure that makes up these distribution networks. West, Brown, and Enquist developed a theory that they called metabolic scaling theory in order to explain the scaling relationships that were seen in the data. Their theory involved some assumptions about distribution network, whether they be airways in the lungs or the vascular system bringing blood to cells. The idea is that these distribution networks have a fractal tree-like structure with branches that reach all parts of the three-dimensional organism. They have to be as space-filling as possible in order to optimally deliver nutrients to all parts of the body, to all cells. Also, they assumed that the terminal units in these branching structures which are the capillaries, don't vary with size among organisms, and that seems to be the case. And they assume that these networks have evolved to minimize the total energy required to distribute resources. They conclude that because the distribution network has a fractal branching structure, that Euclidean geometry is the wrong way to view scaling in this case. Euclidean geometry was what gave rise to this two-thirds exponent in the surface hypothesis, but West, Brown, and Enquist asserted that one should use fractal geometry instead. Their theory involved a considerable amount of physics and mathematics, and I won't go into it here, but the result was with their detailed mathematical model using the three assumptions I mentioned, they were able to derive Kleiber's law, that is, that metabolic rate 
is proportional to body mass to the three-fourths. Where the explanation for this lies in the fractal geometry of the distribution networks. I realize that this discussion about metabolic scaling has been somewhat complicated, and in fact metabolic scaling is a very complicated topic. It may have been sort of unsatisfying for some of you. People who don't have a mathematical background may have found the mathematics here a little bit challenging, and people who do have a strong mathematical background might be frustrated because I didn't really talk about how the model works. So I put up some papers on the course materials page, some of which give a description of this model in completely non-mathematical terms, and some of which give technical explanations of how the model works. You can go and choose the paper at the level that you're most interested in if you want to follow up on this. To finish with, I want to talk about one of the things I found the most interesting in reading about this model, which was the interpretation of the model described by the West Brown and Enquist team. Now we'll call that the surface hypothesis, which turned out not to match the data, was based on the idea that surface area scales with volume to the two-thirds power. Well, what West Brown and Enquist say is that metabolic rate indeed scales with body mass, like surface area scales with volume, but not in three dimensions. Rather, the geometric scaling is in four dimensions. Okay, so let's talk about what that means. West Brown and Enquist say, although living things occupy a three-dimensional space, their internal physiology and anatomy operate as if they were four-dimensional. Fractal geometry has literally given life an added dimension. Okay, so let me show a picture to illustrate what this means. So earlier on, we idealized organisms as spheres, and the surface hypothesis argued that since surface area is proportional to volume to the two-thirds power, metabolic rate is proportional to body mass to the two-thirds power. Okay, that's if we assume that you are three-dimensional. But what West, Brown, and Enquist are saying is that because we have these fractal branching distribution networks, Internally, we aren't three-dimensional, but rather we have some kind of fractal dimension that's between three and four dimensions, and it's approaching four dimensions because of the space-filling aspect of these fractals, and that metabolic rate scales with volume, or mass, to the three-fourths, completely in analogy with this three-dimensional idea, but this would be as if we were being approximated by a four-dimensional sphere. So that's very intriguing, the idea that we are actually, or behave as though we are four-dimensional creatures due to this fractal structure of our distribution networks. Well, as you can imagine, this idea, and in fact, West, Brown, and Enquist's entire theory has been very controversial and has gotten a lot of criticism in the biological literature. Some people have argued that three-fourths is, in fact, not the correct exponent, if there even is a single exponent. Others have questioned the mathematical correctness of the West, Brown, and Enquist model. And there's been many other criticisms as well, and a lot of back and forth between supporters and critics of this model. For our purposes, I think the bottom line is that this model is interesting, it's very elegant, but both the explanation and the underlying data are controversial. And I should also note that there have been many updated versions of the model developed by various groups since the original set of papers by West Brown and Enquist. So if you're really interested in this and you have a technical background, there's much in the literature for you to explore that's been done on this in recent years. Jeffrey West has gone in a different direction. He's now taken up the subject of urban scaling. He's working with Louis Betancourt on how attributes of cities, such as crime and so on, scale with city population size. And they ask the question, can this kind of scaling behavior also be explained via fractal distribution networks?
This is the topic of our next subunit after we hear a guest spot with Jeffrey West talking about metabolic scaling.